What's up guys? I am here with my buddy Louise. Today we are going to talk about one of our favorite late summer, early fall patterns and that's flat side crankbaits. We both kind of share the same mentality and the same yeah. tackle box as far as our favorite baits to throw. So this is Louise's and Ben's one, two approach to flat side crankbaits. If you would like to join us, let's do it. Dude, this is even bigger than the one before. Dude, this one might be a 10. Nice fish. Holy shit, I need help. Gonna have a stroke. Welcome back my friends. I am Ben with the Hookup Tackle, a Tackle Otaku on Instagram, being joined by our buddy Louise. High Country Outdoors on Instagram. Why is it High Country? Uh, Why not? We are literally in Phoenix. <laughs> it's got a double meaning, you know. So oh, I, know. I see. Makes more sense than Andrews. Hmm. <laughs> yeah. What? Andrews, the underscores and the exclamation yeah, points. Okay. I have no idea what the hell is going on. Yeah. Thank you for the insightful answer. <laughs> CJ, How's drug going? testing starts on Monday. Oh, good, good. Yeah. Oh, and by the way, we are joined by our buddy CJ at Desert Bassin. What's up? Why is it Desert Bassin? We're in the Why desert. not High Country? It could be Desert Trout. High Country mm -hmm. Bassin? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. In the valley? High Desert Bassin? High Desert Bassin. Yeah. I might as well just go with like Frozen Tundra Bassin. Oh, this would be interesting. <laughs> See, we've already derailed, Louise. I told you it'd be a good time. <laughs> All right, today, guys, we are talking about a topic that I think everybody should have in their box tied onto their rod as we transition into kind of late summer early fall, and that is a flat side crankbait or flat side square bill. This is a technique that we throw all the time. Well, it can really be a year round yeah, for me, technique. Yeah. yeah, so you throw this a lot. Mm -hmm. This is really something that gets a lot of press and notoriety early in the season, right? So as the square bill bite kind of transitions into that shad spawn, a lot of guys talk about going from a you know, more of a traditional round square bill to a flat side square bill. But this is something that really kind of does the same thing this time of the year, but people kind of, for whatever reason, they just don't talk about it. I think they just go hunting mm -hmm. instead. Yeah. But what is it about a flat side crankbait for you that you prefer over more of a traditional round crankbait? And I, and I brought a round crankbait because I want everybody to understand the difference too, but give me some answers while I open this up. I really like it for um, fishing around cover. Um, obviously, I'm not throwing it right into the cover. It's got a lot of drawing power, whether it's got sound in it or not. And one of the, my favorites is uh, probably like go with the silent one right off the bat just because that's the most natural. I mean, any shad isn't making rattling and shit, you know, as it's coming through the water. So sometimes these fish just have so much food in front of them and like they've been seeing the real deal all day. So they're not going to fall for some something going by them like rattling with a whole bunch of noise and shit. So gotta show them something that they're not gonna have time to, you know, take take too good of a look at and they're just gonna feel it coming through the water and swipe at it. Yeah. Really, you really cuss a lot. I'm disappointed. Yeah. Let's take a look. Let's compare the two. So this is a traditional square bill. So this is a Lucky Craft uh, LC 2.5. This is a pretty normal standard type square bill. Uh, pretty much every brand in the world makes a crankbait like this. You can see it's kind of a round body. I'm going to hold it up next to a Mega Bass Sonic side. So, you know, you can see the difference. This one is much flatter. This one is rounder, right? So essentially the difference here is the rounder, more traditional square bill style is just going to have a wider action, right? So as this is coming through, it's just, it's got more 
of a slower movement as it's cranking through. It's designed to kind of grind and deflect and bounce, right? And then the flat side is gonna be a much tighter. So instead of having this big kind of slow bulldoze movement, it's got this real tight, more of a, a much more natural movement. So the easiest way to kind of think about this is when you're really trying to imitate as naturally as you can uh, a bait fish that's swimming, the flat side typically will bring that to you. Now, a lot of people talk flat side in cold water and you know round in warmer water. I've never bought into any of that. I, I just think it's a more about the forage mm -hmm. and what you're trying to bring through. So if I'm trying to grind rock and wood and that kind of stuff, I almost always stay in more of a traditional, whether it's an LC or an Evoke or something that I can really kind of bang around. Mm -hmm. But when the fish get really keyed in on bait, and that's really what's happening here and why we catch a lot of fish this time of the year on them, right? Mm -hmm. Is the fish are transitioning out from the deeper water. They're starting to follow the shad migration and for that fall migration into the shallows. Right, so they're really keyed in on bait fish. So out here, it's threadfin shad. Where you guys are, it might be, you know, it could be smelt or wakasagi, or it could be uh, gizzard shad. It could be perch bluegills. I mean, it could be a lot of different things. But when those fish follow the bait into the shallows, the flat side crankbait is just so lifelike. And you still get the cover deflection. So it's gonna be great for, you know, rock, weeds, cockle burrs, you know, light cover, I would say. If you're in really gnarly, heavy stuff, stay with more of the wide body. But for, you know, light cover or even slightly open water, you know, you can jack them on open water with this, fishing it down a dock, down a wall, down a lane, right? So talk to me this time of the year for you. Now, I thought this would be fun to have us talk together because you're fishing primarily from a kayak. Yeah. Are Almost you 100%? Nine times out of 10, yeah. yeah. So you're giving kind of the kayak idea. I'm fishing mostly from a boat, unless Griff has convinced me to go walk the shore somewhere. Uh, so this time of the year when it's hot as hell, 100% from a boat. Yeah. <laughs> but talk to me about your approach from a kayak and what it is that you're looking for. What type of areas are you looking for when you're throwing a flat side crankbait? Yeah, so I, in the kayak, I think I can get away with a little bit, throwing this in a little bit heavier cover and whatnot. Um, but for sure, like, I'm choosing uh, the flat side when I need to like be pulling these fish out. So like, uh, with like the heavier cover and stuff, like you're saying, the square bills for sure. Um, that round, you get that really good deflection. Um, but the sensitivity on a lot of these is pretty hard to beat because you're getting that uh, circuit board chip uh, lip and uh, just getting like so much feedback. And uh, I don't have side scan on my kayak, so I'm using uh, I'm using the sensitivity of the crank to get my you know basically figure out what I'm fishing. So, so you're you're waiting for the feedback from your lure to your rod to you to kind of understand your surroundings. Yeah, like if I need to go with something else or, you know, this is definitely like one of the ones that I could feel them get the most feedback from. Like, Okay, okay, and that's good. And so from a boat, I'm never really, I mean, I guess I'm paying attention to that, but that's never going through my mind as to when I'm choosing this. So you're using it and throwing it to give you the lay of the land and hopefully catch them yeah. in the process, <laughs> right? And I'm using it solely to give the fish, like I already kind of have my targets picked out. And for me, it's kind of a lane bait. Mm. So if I'm just covering a shit ton of ground, this, I mean, I could throw this, but usually I'm, I'm going with something different, right? So I want something that I can throw shallow, I can throw into the tray and throw into the grass. So maybe I'm going with more of a traditional square bill or maybe not even a crankbait at all. Maybe something that's just even faster moving. But when I find that the fish are really specific to lanes and they're pushing bait up and corralling fish in certain lanes, so it could be a weed edge. It could be, you know, maybe there's a tree line here, a tree line here, and I know they're feeding down this lane. Maybe it's two docks and I'm throwing down both docks. Some type of clear zone and path for me 
this is just an amazing tool because it's so lifelike, like what you said, it, it pulls them out. Mm. So if they're buried in that cover and I can get this coming down that, that lane, it's so lifelike that it will they will come out yeah, for, for sure. it. All right, well, let's, let's talk about the actual bait because I did say it was a one-two punch. We both find ourselves throwing the same flat side. There's a million options, okay? And there's a lot of really good options. So your one-two punch could be completely different than our one-two punch and you'll be just fine. Right, but at some point you have to choose something. You have to have a starting point, right? So what is your starting point when it comes to a flat side? Uh, I definitely go with the HPF first. Um, I, now I have so much more <laughs> confidence with it. So, you know, I got a lot to back that up. Second choice is probably the Sonic side and followed by the silent version of the HPF is right there along with it, so. Okay, so HPF Sonic side for you. Yeah. I'm usually Sonic side HPF. <laughs> so that's usually my my one two. Now, I'm curious why why HPF then Sonic Side? What do you what do you get from the HPF that you're that you're loving? Uh, I feel like I can get down a little deeper with the Sonic Side, but I've just had much more luck. It's just a confidence thing, really, with the HPF. So. Okay, and I should I should point out just in case. I mean we just throw HPF and Sonic Side around. Sonic Side is a Mega Bass crankbait. Hold up that one that's in the package. So that's a Mega Bass Sonic Side. Okay, and then the HPF is an OSP crankbait. Hold that guy up. And the HPF comes as a silent, so a spec two that has no noise, and it comes as a rattling. Okay, so the original crank was a rattle, the spec two is a silent. With the Sonic Side, you just get the one option, which is silent. So almost always a flat side is silent. That's a pretty unusual one actually to have a little bit of a rattle. So you guys can see the, the difference between the two. All right, they're both kind of similar shaped, but the OSP is definitely thinner, right? So it's gonna have a, a different hit, a different knock on it. The single, uh, the HPF that's actually has the rattle in it. I like that a lot because it's only got one knocker in it too. So I th I, I'm not really a big fan of like a rattle per se. It's I like more of like a single knock or maybe just one or two things moving around inside my bait. So I kind of like the more simple version, I guess. Okay. Do you find that there's that there's specific situations where you catch them better on a rattle versus a silent or vice versa? Mm. Yeah, so uh, like what you're saying, like the lanes and stuff, uh, there's a point um, I was fishing in a canyon and it's like super narrow and these fish are just pushing Chad up against the, the wall. Like they could just see him boom, boom, blowing up. Um, you know, we threw some other stuff in there, not too interested, right? But, you know, throwing a silent one right in there with it and mixing it right in with the same fish they're pushing up and hitting is one of them is bound to make a mistake, you know? So. Yeah. <laughs> So when they're when they're super keyed in on specific bait, that's when you find the silent yeah. to be a better approach. Mm -hmm. And when sure. they need to try to track something or find something, then you can go to or the like rattle. muddy, muddy or dirty dirtier water. water. Yeah, yeah. Sure. so typical stuff. Both of these baits have different lips on them, right? So you can see the Sonic side has uh, more of a squared off lip, and then the HPF has more of a rounded lip to it, right? So they're both going to deflect different. They're both going to grind different. For me, I like the Sonic side because I feel like I can literally just burn this thing in as fast as I can. I can grind it through pretty much everything that's shallow and it kind of, it bounces off the way, the way it moves. Usually when I'm throwing a, a flat side crankbait, I'm usually in more of a burn mode. I want it to look like a shad that's fleeing away uh, similar to what you're saying, I'm looking for that same type of activity, right? So fish, they're pushing bait. Obviously, I'd like to catch them on top water, yeah. but sometimes they just don't eat top water. Sometimes the water's so skinny, right? Like I was watching some of the fish that you're catching, and I should have been able to catch them on top water. Right, in <laughs> theory, right <laughs> but that water is so thin and so skinny that a lot of times top water is too intrusive, right? And that's how it gets out here in the fall a lot. Like a lot of times our lakes will start to fill up and the shad will migrate back into the grass and cockleburrs and some of those little bushes. And if you throw a top water in there, it's just so loud that they don't eat it. And then you throw, you know, a crankbait or something silent in there and they'll chew it, right? So typically for me, I like the Sonic side because I just feel like I can fish it super, super fast. 
And then if I need just a little bit different action or I need to slow down and calm down, that's usually when I'll go uh, to the HPF. The HPF, even though it's flat, it has a lot of vibration to it. You can feel it, similar to what you're saying, you can feel it almost like a chatterbait down there. You can For feel sure. it kind of buzzing. And that's just due to the shape. All right, so talk to me really quick about color. How specific do you get with color? Are, me and Jeff argue this all the time. He thinks color makes no difference. I think it's absolutely super critical on a bait like this, but what is what are your thoughts? Uh, <laughs> I'm kind of in the middle. Uh, I like to have fun and, and try some more um, bold colors, I guess you could say. Okay, right? yeah. Uh, or stupid. <laughs> yeah, however you can call them bold. <laughs> yeah. You know what? For you, they're bold. Yeah. Yeah. For you know, Griff, I like a bright stupid. pink or like you know, catch one on something like that. Every once so you in a go while, crazy. So. Yeah. Okay. Just mix it up and. And that's some... just for fun. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's just I like to have fun with it. So. All right. I find the fun part of fishing catching the fish. So <laughs> if you guys also enjoy catching them, uh, I usually stay pretty simple with colors, uh, so I'm the opposite. I guess I'm no fun. Mm. I usually just throw, if, if it's shad related, something with a white tone. So Tasty Shad uh, or Ghost Minnow in the HPF, something Bahama Milk Pearl or MB Gizzard, something like that in the Sonic side. I keep it really clean. If you guys are catching fish that are feeding more on bluegill or perch, and obviously, you know, match those types of tones. If you're fishing in funky water, right, it's kind of muddy or whatever, then you can play in some of the chartreuses. Uh, I see you've got like a Mega Bass Sexy Shad, something with more shine and that's, to it. That's probably why I end up, you know, going with some of those crazier colors, because most of the time I'm fishing in like medium to stain water, so. Yeah, your water's get a little funkier. Yeah, yeah. You can get away with that stuff. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, any, any way you go, uh, you know, color-wise, it, it's really about bait fish here. So, you know, you can find flat sides, like even Mega Bass makes sonic sides and craw patterns. And there's no reason you can't catch, if they're feeding on a craw, there's no reason you couldn't throw a flat side for a craw eater as well. But really where this just really opens up and you're gonna have a ton of success is when they're keyed in on bait. There's a million different options. We're like, well, if you picked a third one, what would it be? And we both yeah. kind of agreed that the KJ flat from Lucky Craft would be our third choice. Here's the thing, if you're on this kind of bite, it's gonna be the same as when you're throwing top water or a jerk bait or a spinner bait or a soft plastic or anything else, right? If you want to extend the life of the bite, then you're gonna to need to show them something different. There's only so many times you can run the same crankbait through the same school of fish before they go, all right, I, we've all been caught on that, right? Not gonna happen again. So. You know, if you're starting the season and they're absolutely jacking, you know, the HPF, and then they lay off of it, maybe switch from the silent to the rattle or the rattle to the silent, or maybe, you know, jump over to the sonic side, or, you know, maybe go to the KJ flat. You know, Evergreen makes a great one. The flat force, Spro makes the little John. I mean, we can go on and on and on. There's a gazillion options, but you'll want to try to play with some different speeds and some different actions to show them something you know, unique or new after you've been wearing them out a long time. Yeah, I found myself throwing that one purely out of necessity because I felt like I caught every fish I could on these two. So I just so you go to that one. had to throw right. something different. Yeah, so and sometimes that can extend the life out. We do the same thing with top water or, you know, various different things as we go through the season. Now, let's talk hardware really quick. It doesn't matter whatever hook you guys like, whatever your lane is, if you're a Gamagatsu fan or a Yugi fan, owner fan, whatever, the biggest thing I can tell you with crankbaits is so rarely do companies put hooks that you want to actually use, right? So almost always with a crankbait, even something like this that's relatively small and natural looking, there's just so many treble hooks dangling that when they suck this in, it's just, it's almost impossible for that whole thing to go in their mouth. So they're always gonna be hooked in weird places, right? The better the hook is, the more likely you're actually gonna land them after you've hooked them. These are two that I put on all mine, if you guys want a starting point. Uh, the Owner ST35 is my go-to for crankbaits. That's this guy, it's a short shank wide gap. It's my absolute favorite hook for a crankbait. Once they're pinned, they never shake this thing. I say that, I'm not gonna wood. ST36 would be the other more traditional. It's gonna match up like what you're gonna see on some of these. Now, you can throw like the OSP hooks are good. 
right? You could throw it out of the box, same with the Mega Bass, but if you want to maximize your bite to land ratio, swapping the hooks is really gonna make a pretty big difference, wouldn't you say? Yeah, I mean, I caught, uh, I don't know, about a half dozen or so over five, six pounds, and that was pretty much it for those hooks, uh, the ones that came with it, so. Yeah. That was, I needed to get something else. <laughs> yeah. So let's talk about setups and line and that kind of stuff. Here, I'll hold those. I know you've got your rod, I got my rod over here. Let's talk about setups so everybody, uh, if you wanna try it, you know what to do. These have become kind of like our go-tos. So for me, pretty much anytime I'm throwing a bait like that, a lighter, shallow diving crankbait, uh, it pretty much goes on this. So this is the Valkyrie 71 Medium Heavy. I talk about this rod a lot. So this is kind of my mid-depth crankbait rod and my lighter square bill setup. I really like a high-speed reel for this. So I'm usually a seven to one or eight to one. I have an eight to one steez on here right now because I'm always trying to burn these things. And really the amazing thing about a good flat size is they don't really roll. They're designed to go pretty much any speed you want to go. So you can, you can use an eight to one and really burn it. And it just gives you that flexibility. I like this rod because it's kind of a glass composite. So it's real soft, it casts good, it lands them good. What do you mainly throw on them? Um, most of the time, the flat side special. Okay. Uh, I got some for like, you know, really small stuff, but this goes with me pretty much everywhere. Uh, I use this rod to throw so many things because on the kayak I'm limited to space and everything. So this really does a lot for me. And for that reason, just it's a staple, you know? So. Yeah, and it's a good point. When you're from a kayak, you are pretty limited. So this gives you the versatility to do. So yeah, I mean, I throw like some top water, uh, like small poppers and stuff like that. Uh, some smaller walking baits. Um, I mean, the crank obviously, uh, do some deeper stuff and even like a smaller jerk bait as long as it's not uh, going too deep, I can still get a good walk on it. So. Let's talk about line. That's kind of the last piece here to throwing flat sides. We're both using pretty much the same yeah. line. You know, really when it comes to line, remember that no matter what the technique is, this is all a system, right? So the rod, the line, the reel, and the angler, depending on how you're setting the hook, how you're casting, what you need uh, out of all of this, it's all a system. And there's not a black and white, like this is the only right way and this is, the, this is all wrong, right? So whatever's working for you. So we both are using just straight Sunline Sniper, 14 pound, 16 pound, 18 pound, 20 pound. Sometimes you could even go to 22 or 25 if you need to keep the crankbait really, really high so it's not diving really deep. Traditionally, like a 14 or 16 is usually That's pretty good. I, start, yeah. I get this question a lot in here, so I thought I would just touch base on it. On line, when you guys are throwing crankbaits, you know, there are a lot of these fluorocarbon brands are going into more niche lines. It used to be there's just fluorocarbon, right? And then, they wanted to keep sales going, so they kept making different types of fluorocarbons and different things. So now you even have, like Sunline makes a cranking fluorocarbon, right? So since this is a crankbait, do you need to throw the cranking fluorocarbon over the non-cranking fluorocarbon? Well again, it's all a system, getting back to that, right? So a cranking fluorocarbon is gonna have more stretch. So it's designed to give a little bit more, it's designed to stretch a little bit more. If you have the right rod, that's designed to give already, you don't want give and give, right? Somewhere along the line, there has to be something solid so you actually hook the bastard and get them in, right? So if you've got a soft rod that's designed for this, then just throw the straight fluorocarbon. It'll reduce the stretch and then you have the rod does the work. If you have too fast of a rod, like let's say you don't have a good square bill rod, right? So you're fishing just more like a jig and worm rod, and you need to give the fish a little bit of stretch, then go to a crinking line, right? And on the flip side, if you have way too soft a rod and you need to stiffen up a little bit, then you could even go to like a braid and do a leader type system. Yeah. So there's some options for you in line, but assuming you have the right rod, right? Uh, it's hard to just be straight fluorocarbon, whether it's, you know, Sniper or Invisex or whatever it is that you guys like. Anywhere in there should be good. All right guys, so that is a wrap. Simple video, I know, but it's really a simple technique that's highly, highly effective. 
and it's a great one-two punch between those two baits. So, Louise, thank you for taking time. Keep sticking the big ones on uh, on the crankbait. I know if you guys try it this season, whether you're fishing from shore, you're in a pond, you're in a big reservoir, you're in a river system, this is just a great way to get bit. You guys are catch a lot of fish. So if you have questions for either myself or Louise, drop them down below and we will get to them. Until next time, guys, thank you for your support and your business and your time, and we will see you soon. See you, dude. Take All care. right, peace, guys.